well at last we're going to do this uh door swag so we're going to the things that you need that are essential two garden canes a bobbin some moss and i've made a bow as well um basically this is the backbone of your design because for most of you you're going to do this possibly or on the foul coast like me where it's quite windy and the wind is definitely a problem and can break things so i start off wiring the two um canes together uh, and then i'm going to get some of my sphagnum moss and this is just cheap sphagnum moss you can uh, get this from the garden center from a florist shop um I'm not sure whether it's legal to pick it. I haven't uh, I bought this. So then all you do is literally um, go around the moss, binding it really tightly to the two canes. So the other thing about this, it, it holds moisture moss. So back in the day, um, flower arranging was always done in uh, moss. So they used to use the moss like sort of the equivalent of or a more natural version of floral foam. The trouble is it does um, soak moisture up. So if it dries out, it starts taking the moisture out of the flowers and foliages that you attach to it. So it's really important to keep it moist and damp. And this is quite wet. So yeah, I'm kind of sorting it out into little pieces and I'm going all the way around with it. I have to tell you that I think this is one of the most therapeutic and beautiful things to do. I absolutely love mossing. It, it's sort of where my uh, career in floristry began when all um, frames and things used to be done on moss. And you, as a junior florist, you'd be put outside in the, the place I used to, they used to refer to it as the outhouse and sometimes the moss was so cold it was actually frozen and you'd have a bucket of lukewarm water you could just dip your moss in um, to, to, moss in, um, to, to defrost it warming your hands up. The other interesting fact about moss is it's a really good cleanser. Not for your face obviously, but it keeps your hands really clean. So when my hands are really really dirty, if you rub it with sphagnum moss, it can get really deep in the ground dirt off your hands. A friend of mine said, well, I just did my hands in bleach. I was like, oh, this is a much much more beautiful thing to do. So there's more benefits to moss. It feels gorgeous. It feels like you're kind of at one with nature. It's something very therapeutic and beautiful to do. So this is the easiest thing in the world as well. The other thing that this moss does when I'm putting it on this frame is it creates a kind of bumper. So as your front door, if you're going to hang this swag on your front door, as the front door opens and closes, this is going to act as a little softener so you don't have a clatter of uh, materials banging on your front door. So I'm going to go back up again to make it all really lovely and neat. And you'll notice when you're doing this that you have little gaps. So just fill them in, a bit like you would with pastry. Just fill it in and carry on. Honestly, honestly, the most loveliest thing to do. So we're going to do a bit of this again in uh, in a few weeks when we're doing Christmas door wreaths. So it's well worth investing in a bag of moss and uh, a wire bobbin because you are going to use it a couple more times at least. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm making it my mission that I'm not asking you to get any equipment that isn't going to be used repeatedly and you are going to get maximum benefit from it. So I'm just going, just making it really nice and even. Um, so this door swag that we're going to make, um, it's like a, a big wheat sheaf, but made from autumnal materials. So 
there's all sorts of uh, things associated with these kinds of things that uh, when you hang things on your door it's supposed to welcome um, good spirits to your home if you're having um, berries berries are supposed to represent uh, money and uh, well supposed to represent pennies so the more berries you have uh, the more wealth you're going to have there's also things in there like a, I'm going to put some crab apples on and a brassica and that's all to do with uh, food and feeding yourselves and keeping yourselves healthy in the Christian world uh, a door wreath is uh, supposed to welcome Jesus into your home so and it's kind of representing eternal life when it's a, a circle but this is different so this is a sheaf and it's more to do with thanksgiving um, and uh, being grateful for all the things that the lamb's given you and literally that's what we're doing today because everything is foraged so this is our booty gathered from out of our garden and also on our walk around Skipple Creek the other day and also when we went to a dolphin home so some of this is from there the figs are from Irena and my beautiful friend Deborah she carried all of this stuff for me while I was gathering more so I'm very grateful so we're doing a bit of battle with the wind today so I'm trying to keep hold of everything I'm starting off um, with this piece of lilac dye um, which lovely Deborah managed to spot in a hedge uh, somebody had obviously cut it down and then just left the lilac dye behind um, so I'm leaving that as the base layer you won't really be able to see it but it's going to create a really good foundation for everything else so ivy's going in next because similar it's not a particularly valuable thing in terms of its beauty but it is going to um, provide a good strong backbone so i've got all the bits of ivy here um, and then what i'm going to do you can see i'm just pushing the ivy through so then i'm going to use my bobbin wire and i'm going to go in between leaves in between the little branches of uh, the compressors and catch it all in so it's not just tied in all at the very end which is what you might imagine if you did that it would just literally fall apart so this is the key to it this building it as you're going along so i do want a little bit of freedom and i do want this piece of ivy just to sort of come to one side so i don't want to gather it up too tightly um and ivy's pretty hardy as well so it can cope with a little bit of uh, of wind and rain and what have you and in fact all those things all those elements um, are going to help most of the things that are on here so the other wonderful benefit of having all this on your door or having all the berries on your door is it's like you've got a little bird feeder there going on on the front door of your house um, I, I do like the idea that it's inviting the birds to uh, to come to your home so uh, the next beautiful thing that I'm going to use is uh, this gorgeous kind of lichen branched piece of apple now this baby has come off our apple tree um, which is just outside our front door um, it's not an apple tree crab apple so I'm just taking off some of the knobbly bits to fit it into uh, the framework that I've made so then holding it into uh, place by going round with the with the wire and then there's no chance of this beautiful piece of crab apple kind of flying off it's actually tied in and attached in as you can see it's come back here and it's joining up with my um, foundation and that's where I'm going to attach it in here here we go and the thing is when you're making these things every one is going to be different I couldn't make two the same so no 
two of these lovely things are going to be identical and it'll be all the more interesting because of the materials that you all choose to use and I can't wait to see what people make. So here we go. So you can see that is a really strong um, foundation for putting on everything else. I'm going to just whip off some of these more eaten apples and they can go into the garden and feed somebody else. Now I've got some grasses, I have to say about grasses, I love the way they move, I love the way they uh, kind of blow in the breeze. So I'm feeding those in now, into my frame, um, in between the branches of apples. And there they go. These are a lovely colour as well. Um, now. I've foraged everything, we haven't cut anything, um, but I have to be honest and tell you I did pull these grasses. Um, everything else we literally found on the ground, we didn't cut anything from trees. Um, we literally just got, got it how it landed. So, again, avoiding um, sort of anything that is a leaf. You don't want to tie a leaf in and make it look unnatural. So I always pull out all the little leaves and things and give them a bit of freedom. But joining these lovely grasses into a few different places or, or attaching them to the branch of my apple. It's just kind of something that's building and growing as you go along. So, and even at that, it looks pretty gorgeous. Um, my next addition is a little bit of fig. This is courtesy of the lovely arena. So, figs are going in. Um, and I'm pulling this quite tight because so I'm fully aware of uh, how strong it all feels. And it might be that you don't know your own strength and you pull your wire and it's so strong and so tight that it's not. That happens to Vicky in our place quite a lot. She's super strong. So, then, I'm going to just do a little bit of a tie in there, like you would on a sandwich bag. And fold that in. So that's doubly saved. And then, This is in the bushes or um, near White Hills where we work. And I don't know if somebody had cut some back, uh, but it was all near bins and I thought, oh, that'll do. That's really nice. Um, and I love the colour of it as well. Um, so it's just about taking advantage of what you see when you see it. So I want this to kind of now start spreading left and right. So this is a good hardy thing to use, see what I mean, didn't know my own strength. So, and it goes again. But you do need to keep giving it a good tug. Um, I'm going to go this way now. What we're doing now is things are building up and I've got all these different lovely textures going on. Um, also quite a good tip is go like here, if you want to come a bit closer, Joyce, you can see it here I'm going between the branches so that nothing can just slip out. So you get sort of a right in there. And that I've hooked it between branches so that it can't slip out when it slightly dehydrates, which of course it will do because uh, it's hanging upside down. So now we're going with some snowberry. Um, the snowberry's kind of coming to an end now, but it's still lovely. And it gives me again another texture, another colour, um, something slightly different. What 
I do need to do now is find a very beautiful front door to put this on. Sadly, mine is less than beautiful. Um, built this up a little bit and I've got things to feed it in between this is now where this is going to come into its own this is lovely oh look at the branching on that look at the lovely litching on that how gorgeous already very in too soon it would have disappeared under the weight of all the other things so now I'm just feeding my wire in so I can capture it again at the top but I am being careful This is a feast if you're a bird, isn't it? Loads of goodies in this. So then, a little bit of carfulness. Uh, Jason hates carfulness, it's one of his least favourite flowers. Um, but in this, it's kind of just another texture. It's just got some beautiful black by Burnham. I did actually use the uh, best of it in my pumpkins, but it's still lovely and it's still going to be a little gift of another colour and a different texture. So I'm grouping that a little bit and feeding it through. Um, I have to tell you, I've removed all of the thorns and things that were on any of the berries that I've included in this because they are nasty semi-dried hydrangea that I'm going to go in at the end but it's blown off the, uh, off the wall. So I've gone in with a cabbage, like a bit of brassica, my all-time favourite hebe is going in there. Okay. All the hydrangeas now for a lovely little cluster at the end. I've got a piece of eucalyptus. I've got a few clips of plants in the garden, um, but this is uh, that's a piece that we kind of fell on. Another stem of ivy. soft branches so they're not anything that's going to poke anybody's eye out or, or whatever and I'm going to put a little bit of nigella seed heads in the bottom just for last bit of texture and then the last bit of fig going in and then the interesting bit right at the very end I'm going to tidy all my stems up but I still want to have some showing so I still want it to have that kind of sheafy kind of look so these stems at the end are kind of fanning out a little bit and then I'm going to get a little bit of moss I'm looking for a nice bit of green moss really and I'm going to wrap that around my stems at the very end. So what that's doing then is just giving them a little bit of coziness, a little bit of moisture, um, a little bit of loveliness. And again, it's just a different texture. It's just a, a different thing around the base, but it also hides all of your workings, all of your kind of bobbing in. And then I've made a really simple bow actually out of uh, raffia. I was thinking of all sorts of different materials and different things and then I thought I just want it to look really natural because this is so natural. Um, often when I'm making these things, I'm making these things commercially and it's a different thing. 
but this is a very natural uh, thing to uh, to make. So hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to uh, tie my raffia bow on it. Jason's been keeping hold of this because it kept blowing away. beautiful pieces of, uh, of berries and branches and loveliness but actually I'm really enjoying having a bit of time to locate these things um, and I've got I feel like this as I'm looking at it and hopefully you will feel the same about yours every time I see it and every time I come home I'm going to uh, sort of think about where I was where Deborah and I were, where we picked up that beautiful red branch, or where we got the uh, lovely snowberry from. Um, this was at Skidpool Creek, where we got the grasses from. And that'll give me a lot of pleasure for the next few weeks. So I hope uh, that you enjoyed that, and I hope you'll make one, and please show us uh, the product of your labors. Thank you.